Hello. Hi, everyone. We're starting a couple minutes early because I see a lot of people are hanging out, getting excited for the uh, private stock stuff today. And there's so much good stuff. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Let me know how this is sounding. Hopefully, uh, we don't have any audio issues today. It seems like I got to figure it out. Turns out, just restart everything seems to work. But uh, Jim's here. Mike Cruz is here. Mike Kedge is here. AV Leather. D'Angelo. Good to see you guys. And uh, before we get to the private stock stuff, we also have some some regular stuff, regular stuff, our normal orders that aren't part of the private stock that we'll go over today too. And anything that you want to see a little bit more close detail of, like uh, Michael Kedge was asking about this. Mike was asking uh, about what's the stitching color. Hey, thank you. Uh, audio sounding good. Thank you guys. What's up, Ella? Uh, Mike was asking about this, or Michael. This is the uh, raw natural Tony the Ant, and he was asking what the uh, what the thread color was. So it's kind of got like a cream color stitching on it. We try to make. I like the natural uh, stuff to have more of like a tonal sort of stitch. Sometimes I like the blue stitching on it, which I think is really cool. Uh, let me ask you guys this: What kind of footwear and wallets are you wearing right now? I'm trying to get some. I have some chat scheduled with some. Um, footwear people that I'm really excited about and I'm wearing some Grant Stone long wings right now and natural or they call it Dune Chrome Excel and I I really like these a lot and I'm wearing my um, Capone money clip I think Jim was asking me which way I put this in my pocket and I noticed my tendency is to sort of put it with money clip side down but for uh I was on a Viberg my Viberg kick for a while uh, I was wearing a lot of those that natural shell plain toe boot from Viberg a lot. And then I switched over to these long wings from Grant Stone and I switched to the diesel boots from Grant Stone. I noticed that, you know, when the temperature gets hotter, I tend to not want like really heavy boots. Um, so I switched to the long wings a little bit, but there's just like so much, so many good footwear brands and different styles that all these different brands are making. Uh, it's a great time to, uh, to be a, a fan of, of leather goods. Raw denim bugs for Giangelo. Higgins Mill. I like those boots from Alan Edmonds. You know, it's, I went over the tannery this week. Skip Horton was showing me that um, he's got some uh, Chrome XL sneakers that Alan Edmonds made, and they look really nice. I was kind of surprised at how nice they look. And they also do like a Park Avenue sneaker, like a shell sneaker that, that looked a little strange to me. Pseudo Capone. Okay, Guillermo. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the uh, private stock. Um, there's so much, like I can't fit it all on the one table right now. But that pseudo shell thing, I was trying to figure out where that came from. Here it is. It's so cool. Uh, um, so what I think this is, is cigar. It's like reverse cigar, but it just has crazy die marks i really like these lines on this side and it kind of reminded me of the, the psychedelic so i was just going to call it pseudo psychedelic but it's uh it's like marbled cigar in the center there and i think they stamped it on the wrong side sort of there so the ink stamp is on the shell side which i've never seen before so i don't know what this is but it's um Definitely something different, which is why we put it in the private stock. Um, so pseudo Capone wallet exterior reverse shell. Yeah, these are reverse pieces on the outside here. Man, that look really awesome. Like I really like that. God, I don't even know. I might like it more than the other like regular psychedelic stuff. Uh, but that's definitely the reverse side of the shell here. So that's a good question. Waiting on a wallet that got shipped from Australia. Nice. Can't decide what I want from a new private stock. Everything looks so cool. So yeah, Ella, that's a good question. Like what is private stock? So this is a really good example of what we're calling a private stock item. And the way that it works is we have a uh, really talented team of people in our shop that I'm standing in right now. And I have collected leather for a decade now. 
and a lot of the leathers that I collect are total random unique things that may have only been made one time or or maybe it's just got a reverse piece that's interesting in some way so I I asked the team you know have at it make something that you think is really exciting and you feel free to use anything you want and that's what the private stock comes out to uh, the other thing is um, like this long wallet is like an insane huge piece of ultraviolet shell which is it's tough to get a huge piece of shell like this. But the other thing that the team sometimes does is they'll make modifications on the styles. So this one has like a little card holder on this pocket, which is something we don't normally do. So it's things like that. Like, uh, here's a, um, another example. This one's got a lot of stuff. So <laughs> this is something that we're calling Phantom. And I think what this is, is that the texture, oh, it might even be hard to show this one. The texture on this is like partially in there. And I'm not sure how they achieved this at the tannery, but phantom is like a really appropriate word for it because it's there and kind of not at the same time. Uh, so this is another example of like something that just doesn't exist. <laughs> so that's what we call the private stock stuff. Or maybe it's just an exceptional piece of color eight shell, which we've done before. It's like, just things that are a little bit more special, um, we try to do. And like, the, I'm looking at the table of them. It's every single piece is something extraordinary. Like a dip dyed amaretto shell that we flip backwards. Like there's three things on that wallet that we've never done before and we just put them all together. So it, that's sort of the idea for private stock. And it seems like, it seems like people really dig it. And um, it's one of those things that how we just appreciate you guys supporting us and it feels like people get really excited about these private stock things which are difficult to do uh you know we're making one of one 42 times which there's 42 items and making one item with that much care and thought is uh a challenge let alone doing it 42 times and then like i have the easy job but it still takes a long time to you know make a product page for every single product there's a reason that places don't do this. It's a lot of work um, for not a whole lot of products, but uh, you know, just the overwhelming support that you guys are giving us, uh, it really encourages, encourages us to do more unique treasures for the private stock. What's up, Salvatore? And I'm losing track of the chat already. Um, MJD is wearing a natural show, Court of Enjoy the Fox, looking to get some leather boots. Let me know if you want any tips on leather boots. I have an idea for a series I'm going to start called Let's Buy Boots, where you can shop along with me while I buy some boots. And I'm going to get some pretty big names in the, um, well, hopefully, if they'll, if they'll come join me, uh, try to get some names from the industry to tell me what's up. You know, maybe I'll reach out to somebody at Alden and they'll give me the inside scoop of what things are or how to size or what different lasts to check out for your feet or different styles that have different leathers. So it might be, uh, you might want to stick around to the channel to, if you're shopping for boots, that's something that I'm really into. Uh, so I'd like to, to provide that as like a resource for you. It might be kind of fun just to like passively shop with me also, you don't have to spend any money. Uh, the lighters look cool. Yeah. Uh, that's something that, uh, I didn't expect. I just showed up and the team goes, look, we got lighters. Like, oh, that's pre pretty cool. And I, I like it. I like it. I was thinking about adding something to it, but I don't know. Sometimes just simple is better. Like it doesn't need to have a bunch of crap, but I was thinking it. And then I realized that I don't want it, but I was kind of thinking maybe it needs something to like clip to a key ring, but like, you don't want a whole ton of, like I already have, you know, all this stuff hanging off my keys. Like, I don't know if I want a huge ass lighter. Like I already have this ridiculous, simply safe key fob thing that I find to be too big and annoying already. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd put a lighter like on my keychain, but it turned out pretty well. It's a nice and expensive way to experience some shell too and get like a useful thing. Uh, all right. R R O X X off T just started following you. I just purchased another wallet from a small maker. That's awesome that you're supporting them. 
He said, look, looking forward to get uh, see what you can get from us. Today is a really good day for you uh, to be ch- to check us out because this is um, this is our private stock day. And we try to do these once a month. And I think it's probably a good time for me to flip the camera around here. But these are where you're going to find things, again, that we just don't normally do. And it's special pieces of leather that I've been collecting for years. And with the, with the uh, team that we have here making incredible stuff, it's like amazing to be able to take these unique leathers and turn them into even more unique pieces. So let's flip the camera around. I'm going to pull my monitor uh, closer so I can read the chat while we do this. The only reason to do this live is for us to interact. So if you have any questions about any of the details, or if you want to see a specific wallet or know anything about it or anything about the leathers too, that's sort of my expertise, ask questions. Otherwise I would just record this and, and do it on my own, but it's great that you guys are here to join me. So we'll flip the camera around here and I'll read the chat and we can go through, we'll go through the daily stuff, uh, the normal shipments that we're already sending today. And then we'll go through all the private stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. I mean, this table this is like the most exciting photo table setup that I've had in a while. Let's see if I can move the my setup here. All right. And not knock everything on the floor. All right. We did it. Uh, Ella says you guys do dog collars. We've got some protos of dog collars that I'm pretty excited about, but um, I don't have them ready to release just yet. But they're going to be cool when we do get them. Um, i got to clear my space here. Maybe I'll show you a couple private sucks, and then we'll go into uh, some of the stuff that's shipping out today. This first one I sort of just teased at. This is that huge piece of ultraviolet shell on our long wallet style. So this is a, a much bigger wallet than I would suggest people put in a pocket, but this is more for like putting in your, like a breast pocket or in a bag. And this one has the, this leather on the inside is also so amazing. It's crazy to think that this piece of leather right here is 80 years old, but what this is, is a calf skin leather that Horween made back in the 1940s. And it was actually returned to them. And who knows why? I, they don't know why. <laughs> It was returned to them, but they have a couple loads of this or have had it. And we've sort of been taking from that pile. Uh, they've had it there for 80 years, but the reason they kept it was because it's so nice. And the problem was, is they couldn't figure out how to make it the same way again. Um, so this is something pretty special. I don't promote it just cause like we, there's not a lot of it, but every now and then people will check out a video like this and say, Oh, I want to check that out. And then we'll, you know, make you something. But that's why the private stock's also great is it gives us a chance to like show off really cool stuff. So this is a huge piece of ultraviolet shell with that 80 year old calf skin on the inside, which is great. The other thing about the ultraviolet is <laughs> actually somebody commented on our Instagram from a post like from months ago and I saw it last night and I was like, oh, that's interesting. But then my brother put up a video of him sort of doing this with a ultraviolet shell wallet. I think it was a Tony. And it was a one and a half year patina on the ultraviolet. And the guy goes, I don't get it. This looks like color eight. And that's a pretty good point, to be honest. It definitely patinas to get darker. Something like this long wallet where you won't be imparting much moisture in your pocket on it, because you'd probably be putting in a bag to carry it around. You're probably not going to see as much color change. But the ultraviolet is definitely purple and with like a pink undertone. And it's very, very, very different than the color eight shell. A lot of the stuff does tend to age to be a, a bit similar. You know, after at least after a few years of using, you might not be able to tell a difference between, you know, color four and color eight. <clears throat> oh, Angelie wants that long wallet. It's it's tough, man. That's a really, really expensive uh, just because the shell is so big on the outside. Here's another one that's sort of like in the more feminine realm. And it's hard for me to like gender things It just more like traditionally feminine, I suppose, just because it's, it's a more vibrant sort of pink color. But this is a, a shade that I wish we could get more of. This is marbled magenta. And the, if you take away the marbling, the magenta shell is like a quarter of the darkness of the ultraviolet. 
it's like very vivid. It, it kind of looks like the color of this dye splatter here. It's awesome. But this is what happens when they marble it. And that's really cool. So marbled magenta on reverse ultraviolet. And then the inside it's ultraviolet in the center. That sort of purple magenta undertone shade. And then the card holders are reverse ultraviolet. Michael DeGregory says, Matt just made a raw reverse ultraviolet three shot and it's amazing. Oh, nice. You know what? I got to ask you guys about, um, what are you guys doing for Mother's Day? <laughs> this is, uh, this will be my wife's first Mother's Day. I got some ideas, but it'd be, maybe you can inspire me to do something better. So let's, let's, I guess we'll keep clearing the table here. Another ultraviolet piece. This is reverse ultraviolet on Apple Watch man, but this is a two layered Apple Watch ramp strap. And you might've noticed, um, like some of the belts we've been doing for this private stock thing are two layers of leather, which are awesome, uh, but they're much more difficult and more expensive, uh, more material and, and just like the labor involved to make them. It takes quite a bit longer and it's the same sort of thing for these Apple watch bands, but I'm really, I'm really happy with them. So it's cool because some people like a little bit of a thicker strap. I kind of like a thin one personally. It seems like I thought I was part of the majority opinion. It seems like most people want like a really thick strap kind of like this. So this is about the belt weight when you put these two layers together, but it's ultraviolet on the a reverse ultraviolet on the side that's going to face the world. And then Western underneath, that's going to touch your wrist. That's really cool. Uh, Luciano Castro says, uh, something I can't uh, pronounce. What's up Luciano and Wei Chen says, Hey Phil, how's the tumbled verdigree Johnny the Fox looking really good. Uh, here, there's just so many things that I can't organize myself, but here you go. Here is tumbled fair degree. And this is another color that I wish I could get more often. This is, it's hard for me. Cause I want to say like, this is so amazing uh, and better than everything else. It, it, but like everything is so unique, <laughs> but this is one of the pieces that I gravitate towards personally, just cause I love this sort of green pale shade and especially the tumbling on it. I look, it looks really nice. If you check out a video from a couple weeks ago, uh, I did a thing where I showed Skip Horween's Tumble Ver Degree Herbie after it's been worn for a bit. And the way that this ages is incredible. It, it gets really bright and shiny, which I, which I like. Hey, what's up, Marco? Good to see you, man. But I really like the Tumble Ver Degree a lot. I just think it's a really nice color and I like the texture on it. Ella says, my mom's in a different country, so I'm going to be hanging around with my grandma. That's nice. Yeah, I think I was kind of thinking about getting um, my wife like a, a tree for our yard to to plant uh, to remember, you know, when our daughter was born. And then, you know, every Mother's Day, you sort of have your Mother's Day tree and you go, look how much you've grown. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. But I'm realizing there's some like buried cables in my yard uh, that I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to dig around. Okay. We're still going to get to the dailies, but uh, I want to show you this here. Amir is loving this one. Do you want to talk about this? The Phantom. You want to come talk about this? All right. So Amir, Amir named this and because it, it's one of these um, sort of mad scientist experiments that's again, the tannery does every now and then trying out new looks and new things. This is something we're calling phantom and it's this very subtle texture. You can see it pop out a little bit more when I get the light to hit it at the right angle, but it's like this really subtle texture. And I think phantom's just about the perfect name for it. It's cause you can kind of see it and kind of can't it kind of disappears on you. So this is phantom and I believe this color is whiskey. I'm looking at my screen right now and it looks really red, but in person it's definitely more orangey yellow. It's interesting. The color in here is, uh, it tends to range a bit, it seems. And then, uh, people really like the reverse cigar. So that's what these two are. And then there's a, uh, the hidden card slot here. Uh, key buddies and denim or raw denim i can make those for you you know the only key buddies uh we have a whiskey key buddy a cigar key buddy and this green shell key buddy if you want non-shell we're also doing a brown chrome excel one for the private stock today 
of the key buddies we're doing for today, this one's my favorite. This is a green shell and it's got this really nice crease mark to sort of like highlight the edges. And the green shell with this antique brass, I think looks really cool. <clears throat> What's up, Jonathan Lux? Yeah, I'm glad that you guys are, uh, <laughs> your friends are gonna try to pick up a wallet. Hey, Mohit, how you doing? Uh, any plans for more private suck baseballs? Yes, um, the baseballs are very difficult for us to, to craft. Um, and we're still working on that. Um, we've got some ideas, but it's, it's almost like I can't charge you enough just because it takes us so long. So I, instead of charging you too much, we're going to try to figure out how to do it better. Let's get onto this belt here. Another two layer belt. And you might know if you've been listening to me for a while that I love black and teal together. We do the giant, the Fox with a black leather on the outside and a teal on the inside. So this is sort of that same idea, but on a, uh, on a belt. So this is, let me check my notes. This is a 36 and a half inch belt. Uh, so if you measure your current belt from the, the pin of the buckle right here to the hole that you currently use and you get around 36, 37 inches, this might be a good one for you, but I really like the black and teal color combo. Um, we're still clearing space here. This is another cool one. I should show you this, these two together. So this is the last of this psychedelic shell that we had for these front two card holders. And um, people sort of freaked out about this look and I love it. Um, and it's really awesome that people enjoy this. We just couldn't get any more leather. So the long story short is there were two shells that we were, we purchased of this uh, psychedelic shell a few months ago, back in February. And last month, Skip told me, hey, I got one more of these hanging out. So we were able to make a couple more things out of it. This is one of the things that we made and I have no more of this leather. They're trying to produce it again, but they cannot tell me when they'll be able to do this again. So psychedelic shell, and then this is black reverse on the top piece and on the back. But the other one I wanted to show you, this is just a really cool piece of reverse black shell that kind of looks like the psychedelic, but this is a uh, regular reverse black, just with a ton of die marks. This one has a green stitch on it that I, I think looks really cool. Uh, Floyd, what's up Floyd? Mike Cruz says, um, when I say Phil can't have any more shell, you keep surprising us. Yeah, Lupe, is, uh, Lupe and the rest of the team have been doing a lot. Everything that you see that's like ultraviolet like this is probably Lupe. And Lupe is great. She makes really, really cool stuff. And, and she just happens to love the ultraviolet. So this is Western ultraviolet with reverse ultraviolet. This Capone is insane. And I really hope it translates on the video. And we've got reverse ultraviolet in the center with this gold clip. I think just nails it. That's really special. Let's see if we can slide in the uh, the daily stuff here. So these are uh, orders that were placed in the last 24 hours that we're sending today. We had a couple of these left. These are the small batch Capone money clips in the black marbled shell. And I really like the color range in the marbled black. It goes orange to green. Sometimes it's just a little bit more forest green and the inside here, a little bit more uh, orange to green. I think we have like maybe one of these left, uh, but I really like those. We did a small batch. Here's a black shell Tony. This is something we try to stock all the time and check out how nice that piece of shell is. Sometimes when you look at all the crazy, you know, psychedelics things and tumbled things, it, it sometimes feels really good to just to see like a very clean, piece of shell like this black it's really really nice we got black shell on the inside of this tony too and speaking of clean so fat herbie is my favorite wallet style that's this one here in the classic color eight so this is if you find a burgundy pair of shell footwear it's probably this color it's a very nice dark brown burgundy shade some angles more red tones come out some angles it just looks like a dark brown it's a nice herbie we got a bugs a natural shell. Do you hear those birds? We've <laughs> got our windows open so the birds are, are chirping today. Here's natural shell on the inside too. I love the bugs because it's like a perfect handhold size. <laughs> I need a word for that, handhold ability. It's just like a perfect size for your hand. 
Uh, Johnny the Fox here. This is one of our best sellers right now in 100% natural Chrome Excel. So we have steer hide Chrome Excel on the outside with horse hide on the inside. And we have to pick thin horse hides to keep the thickness of this wallet down. It's even almost getting a little thick, even with the horse hides. But if you don't pick horse hides, you'll have to thin down leather. And we don't like to thin down leather because it tends to rip when you thin it. So we just pick naturally thin pieces of leather. So this is one of our best sellers right now, along with the uh, the English Tan Dublin Fox. Here's another classic look. Black shell on the Frank the Enforcer. And it looks like we got one more big guy here. We have some valet trays in black and color eight shell. And the thing about our shell valet trays is there's always going to be some imperfection in the shell. And let's see if I can even see it. I can't even see one on this. There's got to be something. Honestly, the light that I'm standing in here, sometimes it's hard for me to see any issues, but there might be like little problems in the shell. And that's how we keep the valet tray cost down is, you know, we'll work with the tannery. And if they have something that's a little off for them, they'll sell it to us for valet trays. And then we can sell you a valet tray that's not $300. We can do it under a hundred. So there's that. Oh, here's a cool, check out this one shot. This is, this is something that like could be in the private stock. This is tumbled natural shell on our one shot card case. We've been doing, and I haven't done it in a few weeks, but we've been doing uh, different random leathers on the one shots. And the idea for the one shots was to be able to make an inexpensive product that you can wear and experience a bunch of different leather types. So if you're not familiar with tumbled natural shell, for example, this would be a really good way to experience it. And we've got some watch straps. So we do a few different sizes of straps. It looks like this one's a little wider. This might be 22 millimeters for the lug width in natural Chrome Excel. And then we also do different lengths. So we have a standard length and a uh, short length. The standard length is, is uh, 120, 120 millimeters for the adjustment hole side and 80 millimeters for the buckle side. And then the short length is uh, 105 by 75. But that natural Chrome Excel strap is pretty clean looking. Here's a cool marbled black Apple watch band. And I still... And we were just talking about it for that small batch Capone, but I really like how the orange goes to black on the marbled black shells. I think it's beautiful. And my favorite shell color will be the last one we show you. And then we'll go into more private stock stuff. This is Amaretto Shell Cordovan on a two piece watch strap. And I think this is, this looks like 20 millimeters and all of our straps have a two millimeter taper. So it's 20 millimeters at the lugs and then 18 millimeters at the buckle side and these this is a this particular strap is unlined which i tend to like more because i find them to be more comfortable but shell cordovan is only so thick so you're never going to get a honk and thick uh online strap in shell cordovan i i also kind of like it a little thinner i guess it depends on like how big your watch case is um you might want like a thicker strap made out of something like this here i'll show you mine for like some of those chunky panerais or something, you might want a strap out of this belt weight. Like this is belt weight Dublin, uh, English tan Dublin that I wear on my watch. Um, and sometimes I feel like the thicker leather complements the chunkier cases a little bit better. Uh, but I also really like how the Dublin wears in. I am missing chat. Trung Lam, Tobias. Good to see your names. Let's see. What's the point of having money clip in these wallets as if they, uh, as if I'll have any bills left to put in them. Yeah. You know what? Especially with the pandemic, that's kind of why something like that one shot card case, I think has taken off for us is uh, not a lot of people are carrying a ton of cash. And I don't know if it's still true, but there was a moment here where restaurants and grocery stores and stuff like wouldn't take cash. Maybe they still don't. Um, so yeah, it's tough. I, and on top of that, the joke is like, yeah, these wallets are so expensive. I'm not going to have anything left to put inside of them. And that's a pretty fair, pretty fair point. I mean, they're not, we're not uh, 
trying to make uh, an inexpensive thing. Um, we're oop, camera went off here. We're just trying to make uh, it, it has to cost what it costs. I mean, the leather for the Cordovan is ridiculous. You know, it's over a hundred dollars per square foot of leather. So you're, I mean, you're looking at hundreds of dollars of leather on the table here. Um, so yeah, people aren't really come coming to us to try to get like the cheapest thing around. We're trying to get you like a unique treasure, I call them. So speaking of unique treasures, let's finish off all the uh, private stock stuff before I run out of time. We got a, a little less than a half hour. This one is color eight shell Cordovan with a croc texture, like crocodile texture on the outside. I, I really like it. I feel like the textures on the shell are a little bit polarizing. I kind of like them, but maybe it's just because I'm spoiled and I see a lot of shell, but I like seeing how the light hits the texture and sort of like highlights the texture in different ways. I think it's cool. And on the inside, we've got, somebody's been asking for brands a lot. And I like this one because it's color eight shell. And then it's got this figure eight, the same name as the color brand on the left side here. And we left this whole huge compartment open, which is much different than what we normally do for a Herbie. So you might just have to like drop stuff in here. This won't fit a passport in the left side here. It's a little too small, but for receipts or even like cash fold in half or even some cards you can drop them in there and the right side we have a hidden card slot underneath the the regular herbie pieces on the right <clears throat> yeah is it you think it's infinity or figure eight i guess the same thing there's actually like a um sorry there's like a underscore underneath the eight that's kind of hard to see but there's like a little line right here underneath the eight which is kind of cool i wish i could show that right here okay we, we looked at this pseudo psychedelic this thing is really cool on the capone so we'll skip past that but that's i i love this one i love that wallet uh we looked at this no we didn't we looked at a different tumbled natural one shot but this is the tumbled natural on the giant the fox again i just love the texture and then that sort of two-tone like tipped effect we'd call it where the tips of the texture are a little darker than the valleys underneath and then color rate reverse on the inside that's that's really nice i don't think you're going to find me saying this i don't like this for any wallets and uh michael cadger is asking about this one this is a hand-stitched raw natural shell tony and i love i love the raw natural for patina uh, Eli Cookie says, are you selling anything made from Horween Derby leather? No, but I have something very similar, and that's a good topic. Here, uh, let me find it. Here. So, this is, um, this is a leather called Dublin, and the Derby is a variation on the Dublin. And if you want to, if you want to get really confused, there's another leather called Essex <laughs> that is the base tannage for the Derby and the Dublin so basically the only difference between this leather here that I'm holding this is the Dublin if I wanted to make this Dublin into a piece of Derby I would tumble it in a mill it makes the color a little bit um, more broken up so you get a little bit more texture it's a little bit more casual I like the Derby a lot also uh, but it seems like people are more into the Dublin like this a little bit more flat and smooth and as opposed to the tumbled up stuff we've done some derby before and there was a color i like in the derby we called it great lakes blue uh but it's like a i forget what color they call it the tannery it's like an ink blue derby and it had these sort of aqua undertones with like a darker navy surface so when that leather was turned from dublin to derby it would get this really nice effect you get a really dramatic like color shift between uh, the blues on the Derby. But this is a Bugs Moran in Dublin, similar to Derby, not the same, but it's beautiful. It's like our, it is our most popular leather right now. And it's just a really nice orangey tan shade. And then on the inside of this guy, we have the vertical card slots on the left and right with the hidden card slots underneath, under here. And we've been doing a lot of vertical card slot stuff recently on the, uh, on the Bugs and the Tony. That was a good question though. Um, Salvatore says, uh, I haven't seen 
a raw natural Tony or Herbie with a reverse natural interior. So I ordered one. Yeah, that's the other thing is um, sort of the idea for showing some of this stuff is, you know, we can do, I can, if you like this one and it's sold, I can make it for you again. Uh, the only, the only difference is the made to order stuff we have to charge you 10% more for, but you know, you can mix and match anything. You could say, I want that leather combined with this leather with a pink stitching and a hidden card slot. And we'll, we'll make that happen for you. Um, but these are the unique treasures that we came up with ourselves. So this, this is special leather here. It's going to be a little challenging for me to explain this one more challenging than the derby question, but this leather might, might look like a weirdo version of black shell. And that's what it looks like to me. It's just like a little bit different than the black shell. I think somebody that's not familiar with, um, the shell cordovan might just think it's shell because it's so bright and shiny and it's super flat and smooth and it doesn't crease. So those are the characteristics, like the defining features of shell cordovan, those three things. But this is like a little bit different. So what this piece is here, this is actually a horse butt chrome Excel piece. And it happens to be cut from the part where the shell is. And then they shaved it down to get to the smooth part of the shell. So it's horse butt chrome Excel shell. So chrome shell, maybe. Uh, and this is a, a unique thing. Like, I don't think we've seen this before a lot of people are really into the horse butt leathers and it's a it's a challenging topic because not all, all horse butt is shell cordovan sometimes it can be the non-shell part of the horse butt and that's often what it is this one is actually the shell part too and people find those in the boot community people that are really into leather boots are really into horse butt boots there's a few different tanneries that make horse butt leather. This happens to be one from Horween that's been shaved down to the shell. And it's, I don't think I've seen this before. Uh, so we have this one Tony the Ant in it. And hopefully that wasn't super confusing. M4-3DA says, can you guys make a tall Tony with vertical card slots? Yeah, we can. I wonder if I even have one in here. Uh, no. We can do it. We've done it. Um... Uh, I don't have one here, but what you're saying is you would like this style on the outside with the, t the bill sock going all the way to the top, but on the inside, you want it to look like this. And yeah, we can do that. Uh, Mohit says, can a wallet or watch strap be made with an alligator texture? And do you guys have a texture to source the leather with the texture already in it? Yeah, we buy the textures already in them. There is a gator texture that Horwing does, it's similar to this. The gator scales are more squared where the crocodile scales are a little bit more ovular like this, but there is a gator texture that Horwing also has and it's nice. We buy it straight from them like this. So the texture's already in there. Speaking of texture, let's show you another phantom piece. So this is phantom shell cordovan. It's like kind of like the Western texture in here. And again, the reason I call it phantom is because you can see the texture sometimes and sometimes you can't. It sort of disappears on you. And originally we were going to call this ghost, ghost uh, texture, but felt like that was like almost a little negative. It's like really more like a phantom. <laughs> so we're going to go with phantom. This is whiskey phantom on a tall Tony. And the inside we've got whiskey shell on top of uh, more phantom whiskey. And it's interesting the color difference on these card holders in the center you might notice are a little bit more red and there's something that happens when they put this texture on that changed the color. I'm not really sure what that is. I can only speculate, but this is whiskey, uh, phantom and then whiskey on top of it. Ella Tam is returned. Um, good questions today, by the way, guys, thank you so much. Let's get on this, this bugs. This is another favorite of mine, raw natural. It's again, that leather, that I suggested people that really like patina. This is going to give you the most dramatic patina on the outside. And the inside is more raw natural, but with the vertical card slots. So the hidden card slots underneath, this is just a different play on a regular Bugs Moran. I want to show you this guy. If you were checking out the, um, the video I did on the woolly Chrome Excel, this is a version of Chrome Excel also, 
that's pretty neat. So this is a leather called Harvest Cavalier. It's kind of yellowy orange and brown. And it looks more yellow because we put this yellow stitch on it. But it's a really neat color. And the Cavalier Chrome Excel is a version of the standard Chrome Excel, just with a different wax blend. It actually has much less wax and grease in it. So you're able to get these vibrant colors. So look at the spine of this money clip, how bright and yellow that is. You'll never see that bright of a color or vivid of a color on the normal Chrome Excel. They all tend to be darker earth tones just because there's so much grease in them. And the inside here, we have a leather called Blue Rockford, which is really cool. And I think the blue and yellow uh, go really well together. This one also has a gold clip, uh, just like your money clip, Jim, if you're checking this out still. I'm excited to show you this guy. Neil M says, the texture on the Phantom is so subtle. Will it fade or flatten? I don't know. We've never, like, this is the first time I've ever seen Phantom. <laughs> I'm glad the name's already picking up or catching on. I've never seen this before, so it's never been worn. But my speculation is that texture's in there. You'll never see it go away. I suppose if this gets really dark in color, it might be even more subtle, but you're never going to not see that texture. It's just super, super subtle. It's cool though. I like it. All right, let's, let's show you this guy. This is, I actually thought this was green reverse, but I started to look at the leather a little bit more. It's actually reverse black and they must have just spilled green dye or something on it. I don't know what happened here. Um, but we liked it. So we, we made a wallet out of it. I think this looks crazy. It's just like so awesome. And there's something about like a unique randomness um, that I just love. And it seems like people also really dig it. So I love this green sort of look. The Horwin ink stamp's basically perfect on the outside of that. It looks like there's another one here. And then the inside. This one actually I'm gonna mark down on price because I was looking at the inside center here. There's like very subtle small inconsistencies in the shell. Like you can see right above my index finger here, there's like a little scar. I don't think that's going to affect the durability of this wallet, but it's just not, I don't think it's normal. I think they cut it in there because it, the pattern was too cool on the outside. I'm going to have to knock, knock a couple bucks off for that, but this is a special Herbie. What's up, Genesis? Uh, Genesis says, glad to catch another live chat. Does the Dublin leather take as long to produce as the Shell Cordovan you mentioned is tan in the same tree barks? That's a really great question. Um, no, it doesn't. It, it, it's, um, <laughs> that's actually a fun story. Let me grab the Dublin here to show you. Back when I was working at the tannery, I remember one day Skip came in all excited, like mad scientist, like I always talk about. He's like, hey, I've been thinking about it. What would happen if I just put a side of leather into the pits with the Shell? I was like, I don't know, try it. So he did that. Originally, originally it was, eh, it, was, it wasn't six months ever, but it was, it was about two and a half months to produce this was the original pit tan version of the Dublin and the Essex, which is the, when you're talking about the tree barks. So there's a big pit that the shell cordovan is tanned in and they just hang them on sticks and let them sort of like steep, like a tea would steep in these pits. They're just floating around with like, a mixture of tree barks and water and salt and stuff. And that leather just sits in there and it slowly tans. And it takes about two months to tan in there. And then the cord of in itself has like so much more curing that eventually takes six months in total. But the Dublin originally was pit tanned right alongside the shells in that same mixture. <laughs> but the first sides he did, and I loved them, and I kind of wish he would do it again, uh, the pit tan Dublin in Essex, it was really nice. It, Looked pretty similar to this. It was just really, really, really dense and super heavy. Like, like just dense and, and, and uh, like the mass of it was so, so intense um, that he felt it was limiting for a lot of products. Like a lot of people back then were trying to do bags out of Essex, which I think they still are. And you would be making like a hundred pound bag. So they decided to do a version of that same tree bark in the, in the mills. There's wooden tanning drums. And they do something called rapid tanning. So you can rapid tan a veg in a drum and that's that's what the, the Essex and Dublin are. Uh, but it's the same exact tree barks that go into the shell. Just the method of tanning is a little bit different. So hopefully that, hopefully that answers your question. Um, great question too, Genesis. Uh, 
Mike Cruz says, what's your next wallet after your Capone? It's going to be, will it be Shell or Dublin? Yeah, this is my Capone. I've been having a hard time getting rid of this guy. Uh, I dig it. I like how it's wearing in a lot. I find it to be quite functional, even though somebody mentioned the cash thing. Yeah, I don't really use the cash very much. Um, but these outside card slots, I find to be very convenient. And then, you know, if I have to go to the hospital or doctor's appointment, I keep all that stuff on the inside of this. And it's also kind of nice to have all that stuff here with me, but in like a punchy, like small form factor wallet. I want a Herbie again. Skip gave me a shell yesterday. Here. I don't know if this is going to be it, but he's still doing like crazy experiments. So here's a shell he gave me <laughs> that he's trying out. And he's like, oh, I got these interesting lines. It's like not marbled. It's just like a different way that he's getting a texture. And I like these little striations that he got in here. And it's on my favorite shell color, the Amaretto. I was kind of thinking maybe to make myself a Herbie out of this. I've been missing the Herbie. Um, I, I like it from a business decision, I probably should be wearing a Giant of the Fox because most people want to see and wear a Giant of the Fox. I just love the Herbie too much. But, uh, you know, I'm probably going to do a shell thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to wear next. I have too many choices, I think is the problem. And I also like, I like seeing how stuff changes. So it's kind of fun to wear stuff for a long time. Uh, Genesis says, also, how much would that raw natural bugs be going for? I don't know. It's probably uh, this raw natural. This is probably, so the way it's priced is the vertical card slots add 25 bucks. So it's normally 225. And then if you add the vertical, it's probably 250 for this guy, I think is what's listed as. We price them like regular stuff that we do. So there's no upcharge because they're um, private stock, unless it's just a leather that they can't get again. Here's a uh, Amaretto shell, Johnny the Fox. Like I was talking about, Johnny the Fox is the most popular and I love Amaretto. Like this probably should be something I wear instead. That's a great, great piece of shell. And the inside has something really neat. People have been really seeking out this especially in the center, the uh, cigar shell and the reverse cigar in particular and the marbled cigar people really like, which is interesting. I find, I, I think the reverse cigar looks different. I find the cigar in the center here to encroach a little bit too close to the color eight color, uh, but it's more of like a true brown. Uh, this is a cool one, but the marbled cigar is kind of like the color eight marble to me. It doesn't have as much red in it but people really like that. I don't have that <laughs> anymore either, but hopefully we'll get some more again. Mark says, hey, Phil, do you ha uh, have you ever added either of the quick quick access card slot or interior or exterior bill slot to a uh, folded? Uh, we do a version of, of the Bugs Moran called the Tony the Ant. Uh, here. Uh, here, let's show you that Tony. So like, um, here's an exterior bill slot on the Bugs Moran-ish, so it's sort of similar. We thought ahead of you though, because if you just, if you take the Bugs Moran and add a bill slot, and this is how we originally did it, we just popped a bill slot on the back of the Bugs. But you'll notice that the, the Bugs Moran is actually more narrow than the Tony. So when you add that bill slot in the back, you're probably gonna want it to be a little wider, so it's easier to get the cash in and out of. That's how we designed the Tony the Ant. So it's easier to get your cash in and out of the back. We made it a slight bit wider than the Bugs. So that would be the cash version of the Bugs Moran. And this one here, let's talk about it. Raw denim, which is amazing. On top of my favorite shell color, Amaretto, which is amazing. And it's got blue stitching on the border. I think this one's gonna be a hit. Amaretto and raw uh, denim on the inside with the baby, baby Ashland stamp. That one's really cool. Sean H, great question. The Dublin takes two months. Sorry for being misleading. No, it does not take two months. The Dublin takes, originally when it was originally produced and they were pit tanning Dublin, originally it took two months. In fact, more than two months. But they, the, it was too dense and too heavy. So they stopped pit tanning it. And now it takes about one month to produce Dublin. A little bit longer than, than one month maybe. But it's it's done in a drum now instead of a pit. So they're able to increase the, the amount of, uh, capacity they can do it faster and it's less dense it's it's much a it's probably a better product um, being not pit tanned in that example 
which is kind of ironic. I like pit tan stuff, but it was just like way, way, way too heavy, like ridiculous. It's like holding a brick, uh, even for just like a little piece of leather. So, so sorry for being confusing. Um, let's take a look at this guy. This is different too. So this is reverse black shell. I actually thought this was reverse green also. It just tends to be on the green range for some reason. And then this yellow leather is actually yellow horsehide, which is cool. I forget why I even have this. It's just like from our collection. And then it's got the yellow stitching, which sort of like ties it all together. And they're reverse black and yellow on the inside. I think that's really neat. This one's actually pretty inexpensive because it's not all shell. I think that one's like 200, 200 bucks, uh, which is expensive, but it's less expensive than the normal shell stuff. Here's a cool one. I really, really, really like this one, especially on the inside. So this is cigar shell on top of denim blue shell, but it's got two different textures. So this is, I believe it's called the string print, a string texture on the cigar. And then it's the lizard texture for the blue part. Check out this inside though. This is so awesome looking. It's beautiful. There's something that happens when you impart the textures onto the shells, the color changes a bit. It's like it squeezes the color out. So it's like a little bit more of like a pale baby blue. And it's really, really, really nice. I like that. And I like how it complements this bluish green in the center. I, I like this one a lot. Oh, we got a lot more. We gotta keep, we gotta keep cooking. I only have a couple minutes left. Here is a, uh, another weirdo <laughs> tumbled cigar, but this one had like a, a texture also on it before i think it's a ridge texture they call it before they tumbled it so it's like extra textury and it's neat really neat and the color rate reverse interior i love this one card holder on the left i think it's beautiful i want to get to this guy we've got a couple, we've got a lot more stuff all right dip dyed amaretto shell this is the reverse side of dip dyed amaretto it's awesome right it's very vibrant and orange it's really neat and then the inside, tumbled blue shell on top of the amaretto. I like tumbled blue a lot. And here's another sort of natural amaretto blue combo. We've got denim blue on the outside, orange stitching, amaretto, denim blue on the inside for the vertical cart slots. I think that turned out great. Let's see how much more stuff we got here. There's a lot. We got a crank more stuff here's another color rate texture this is my favorite texture that Horwin does it's called western i really really like that <laughs> there's something about this one that makes me really happy i like how the light hits uh the highlights on this texture a lot i think it's really cool and then more western on the inside it's like clean and different as opposed to some of the other like loud color combos Here's a three shot card case in the raw natural. And then the middle pieces are reverse natural. This one's hand stitched. Here is another raw natural piece on the Bugs Moran. But this is another one of my favorite pieces. I like the inside of this a lot. Um, this is cigar shell and on top of, I believe this is mahogany shell underneath. And it has this blue stitching on the inside and it's framed. Like they I think Danae who made this did a crease mark for this one and a stitch card holder for the other one. I think that's a really smart idea and it looks beautiful. It's a great color combo too. It's something I wouldn't have thought of. I, I like that one a lot. Here's a, uh, another, this is so clean color eight shell on the Bugs Moran. This one has vertical card slots, but it's just like really beautiful and, and simple and clean. Classic color eight. And then the shells on the inside of this are really nice. Super bright, shiny and smooth. Great ink stamp in the center. It's a really, really clean Bugs. Here's a tall, this one's also really nice. <laughs> are any of them not? All right, Garnet Shell Cordovan, the most red Shell Cordovan color that Horween makes on a tall Tony. So the bill slot goes all the way to the top. In some angles, this does look kind of color eight-ish, but other angles, it's kind of red. The natural Bugs Moran is calling your name, GV. Yeah, it, it, it's nice. There's some really good stuff. And it's funny, cause like, I'm, I don't know why I'm always surprised, but every time we do a private stock thing, I'm like really excited that it's new things that we've never seen before. 
it's awesome that we're able to keep it fresh. Not with just like one new thing, but there's like 30 things we've never done. So garnet shell, really nice. And the garnet shells that we have, for some reason, they're like some of the nicest shells that have ever been made, in my opinion. They're super smooth. They're like really rich. Let's get to this guy. I have two lighters. So this is actually a Bic lighter, like a standard Bic lighter inside of this Color 8 reverse sheath. Actually, this might be natural reverse. But we thought these turned out really well. So there's one of these, and there's a uh, black reverse one too, which who knows where that went. It's somewhere else. Uh, here's another cool piece. This is horse butt chrome XL in a black color, but this is not the shell. If we need to come up with better terminology, that's like not confusing to the world. But this is pit tan chrome XL that's tanned alongside the uh, shell cordovan in a black color. And people, again, that are in the boot world are really in into uh, horse butt leather. This is a one shot in that. Oh, here's another Harvest Cavalier piece on an Apple watch band. It's like yellowy brown. And this is an online strap. It's a little softer, but that should be quite comfortable. Uh, and then we have a few of these machine gun jacks. And these are 60 bucks. Uh, people have been asking us for machine gun jacks again recently, which is great. Um, this is a style that we obviously can still make but i took off the site as a standard item just because we had so many different products and i was trying to simplify it down this one you can fit cash inside of but you have to fold your cash into thirds um but you can fit a good amount of cards in here and it just snaps closed and it's a cool symmetrical design we have two in the silver snap hardware and then two in this antique brass and again they're pretty inexpensive um but i really like these these are in black Chrome XL leather and key buddies. There's one of these brown Chrome XL key buddy, which we didn't make as a standard item. But if you have a brown Chrome XL belt and you love that belt, this is the same exact leather that's on your belt. So you could have a matching key buddy. Uh, here's another one in a rare cigar shell cordovan. We did two of these and I marked these down a little bit too. And one of these whiskey shell key buddies also. Which the uh, these keychain belt clips are new for us. And we haven't done these colors before. We had the green from earlier in the video too. Here's one more psychedelic shell piece. It's so small that you don't get the full context of the psychedelic shell. But this is cut from that psychedelic shell cordovan on a Lexington key case. And I guess this is the last item here. This is This is another belt. And I severely underestimated the effort it takes to make a two layer belt. Um, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to do these like consistently. And if we do, they'll just kind of have to be expensive because it's a lot of leather. It's double the leather and takes about twice as long to craft. But this is really neat. If you've caught the video on the Wooly Chrome Excel, this is that same Wooly Chrome Excel, but with a Western texture in it. And it turned out beautifully. The Backside, it's lined with some natural Chrome Excel, which turned out really clean. This one is 36 inches. Um, and all the sizing will be written on the site too. Um, but we can't change the size on this. It's like 36 is all you get. All right. I think, I think that's everything. It's a lot of stuff. So let's flip the camera around again and uh, wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. Hello. Okay. Let's get the mic. Well, thanks for hanging out and checking out uh, all the stuff, guys. And great, really good questions today. The leather questions got me going. I, I love the leather questions a lot. I was at the tannery this week, a and uh, Nick Horween gave me some really good leather examples that he used to bring around to, to um, different like events to describe the differences in leather. So I've got some great examples of pieces of Chrome Excel. And the, the big shocker that everybody thinks full grain means that the leather's great. I can make you a crappy full grain leather. And in the world of leather, um, te technically, I think people would call Chrome Excel corrected grain. It's not like corrected in the way that I think most people think corrected is. When I think of corrected grain, I think it, it looks like suede, like you're fully sanding down everything on the grain. But if you really look at Chrome Excel and you, f and you flex it and, and just like look at the grain, you can still see those hair holes. 
that's like it's somewhere that it's not corrected grain but he gave me examples to show every polishing step that they make oh there's my timer to stop but he gave me these examples of leather from the chrome XL crust where it's like very very grainy untouched and then there's three different polishes that they just polish the grain and sort of smooth it in and he sent me those or he gave me pieces of those so we'll try to do like a really close-up detailed look at what chrome XL grain looks like uh, and he gave me some other really cool examples, like a piece of, of steer hide, a piece of horse hide, a piece of deer skin, and a piece of calf skin. So we can compare the differences of those grain types. And I think it might be pretty interesting. I've got some chats coming up. Oh, missing, uh, losing all the video today. Sorry. We've got, I also have some chats coming up with different people in the footwear world. Uh, so stay tuned for that. You can watch me buy some boots. I got to... <sighs> If my kid will eventually go to sleep, uh, I'll be able to do some more content and like buy myself a pair of boots and stuff. But uh, thank you guys for supporting us. It's the most important thing to say. Um, every time we do these private stocks, I'm so excited to show you them because I know how excited that you are to see them. And that's a great reason to get up in the morning, right? To make fun things. And um, we couldn't do it without you guys supporting us. So I just appreciate you so much. And everybody appreciate you guys for hanging out in the chat. Um, yeah, camera went off. Sorry. Yeah. This camera turns off every 30 minutes unless I press the shutter button, which is kind of annoying. It also means I should probably get out of here, but Hey, um, thank you guys so much. Site goes, uh, live in, uh, at four o'clock central time, which is about a half hour from now. All the stuff we just showed you will be up on the sale page of ashlandleather.com. They tend to go pretty fast. So the best advice I can give you is like, if you're, if you're not sure on something buy it, like put, not just put it in your cart, but buy it and go all the way through the payment. Because if you don't do that, it, somebody else can like snipe it out of your cart, which is something I don't know how to control, but you can grab it that way. And if you go, if you change your mind, just email us right away. Hey, you know, never mind. Like I want my money back and we'll just cancel it. And that's no problem. But if you're like on the fence about something, just grab it and, and buy it. We can always cancel it. The other thing that we're trying to do that we did last week for the irregulars is we're trying to ship everything that gets ordered in the first 45 minutes or so. We're going to try to ship that now. So if you live kind of close, you might be getting it on Monday, which I think is like another fun thing to do. So we want you to have these as soon as possible. Uh, Genesis, Floyd, Untouchable, Christopher, Jim, Floyd again, Trung, Neil, uh, Ella, Vincent, GV, Sean. Thank you guys so much. M43DA. You guys are great. And Mohit, how could I miss Mohit? Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you guys. And uh, I'm out of here. Have a great weekend. Have a good Mother's Day. And see you.